beautifully written yeah. and um yeah you really have to pay attention to get the humor yeah well i mean it it was it showed that um dan Aykroyd could still be good too yeah because him is like the um <laughs> popcorn <laughs> and then the way he goes with you know cusack breaking the tv over his head and you just see him twitching a little bit on the ground <laughs> afterwards yeah I yeah, love that's that. a good uh, one. it's got a, a good bit part for Hank Azaria as the as the guys that are sent to to uh was one of the CIA agents um oh, who are yeah. trying to catch uh, yeah. John Cusack in the act so that they can take him down. And at the heart of that movie is a high school reunion, right? Yeah. Gross point. Yep. And that's yeah, so that, exactly. Yeah. Gross point and then Martin Blank. Um <laughs> the uh but his his sister Joan Cusack as the office manager, yeah, <laughs> basically steals the entire movie. They've been in a few together where she has a supporting role, right? Yeah, because she was in High Fidelity too, yeah. which I can't bring up because I friend, think that came out. She in comes 2000. in and yells at him. She's like, "I can't believe what you did." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. High Fidelity did come out in two thousand, right? I want to say, or did it sneak out in in ninety nine? We also haven't talked about you should know being I John Malkovich at all can't. either. Oh. Being John Malkovich came out in ninety nine. I just rewatched it. It was on one of those late night channels that I get that shows old movies, and it's so good. It still holds up. I love Catherine Keener. Yeah, yeah. And when I started to grow out my natural hair color, I was like, it came out in two thousand. It doesn't count. High it fidelity. doesn't. Oh, when did being being John Malkovich counts? It came out in ninety nine. Okay. Uh, produced by Michael Stipe when he was doing what? Yeah, oh, I didn't remember that. Yep. He when I started to grow up, my natural hair color, my my hair was all kind of crazy because I yeah. wasn't using any product, and I was like, "Guys, do I just look like ugly Cameron Diaz?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I don't know how they did it, but they managed to make her look so drab. And they did. They really did. She's like in the monkey cage with her. <laughs> yeah. It's such a bizarre and wonderful PTSD. film. Yeah. Um, what was I just going to look up? Was it? It might have been being John Malkovich. Yeah, because we're, we're going to check. We're the gonna, year. I was going to check Michael Stipe. Um, Fact checking while we are recording. Yeah, I like know, the way it happens. This is... It's not that unusual. I've heard plenty <laughs> of this going on. Um, yeah. Propaganda films, I think, is no, nope, not propaganda films. Hmm. Is it Gramercy Pictures? No. There's something about Michael Stipe producing films for a little while, and this was one of them. Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. <laughs> yeah. No, it was such just a a wild, you know. Yeah, produced by Michael Stipe, yep. Sandy Stern, Steve Golan. Mm-hmm. He also pro- uh, wow. He also was an executive producer for Velvet Goldmine and Man on the Moon. Oh, Man on the Moon is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, we haven't, we didn't hit any Jim Carrey films or Adam Sandler. Uh, do you feel at a loss? <laughs> no, well, I was a little surprised. Billy Madison was in there in that Rolling Stone list, as was Dumb and Dumber. Okay. Which I thought was, and I'm trying to think. It's, Dumb and Dumber is pretty funny. Oh, and so was Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy. I loved that yeah. movie. There was definitely, I mean, uh, Wayne's World was in there too. We didn't talk about that. That was the 90s. Holy cow. So was, um, wasn't uh, Austin Powers the first the one? The first one. Yeah, it I must think have that been. hit in the... Yeah, it must have been, because I remember seeing it through Fountains. 97, I want to say. I'm guessing here. Let me see. Am I right? It was. 97. <laughs> Aw. Um, that first one, though, I I think was was really good. The first Austin Powers? Yeah. 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 It, it totally stands up. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Um, so the cast from SNL was out there making movies. And that was, I mean, everybody stuff. had had their... Side project or their Hollywood experience. Yeah. Let's actually do just a little dive into SNL films that came out because... We should. Chris Farley, man, he deserves to be remembered. Yeah. So I want to see... There was a ton of them. Oh, Coneheads. 
<laughs> oh, that was the 90s? That was the 90s. Ooh, I'm a little embarrassed about that movie. Um, yeah, Wayne's <laughs> World, 92. Coneheads, 93. Okay. Wayne's, Wayne's World 2, 93. 93, it's that old. Wow. It's Pat. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Um, then there Wait, was Molly the... Shannon did another one, right? Molly Shannon's in a 90s movie. Or was it later? I think it's a little bit later. Her Irish Super, Catholic well, no, girl. Superstar made it in there. 99. Okay. Was when that came out. Um, I just remember my Night at the cousin. Roxbury. Oh. <laughs> um, my cousin does a really good impression of Molly Shannon in that as that Oh, character. as as oh, yeah. as yeah. sister, it was Sister Mary Margaret. Isn't it Sister Mary Margaret? She's not a sister cuz she's a student. Oh, that's right. Ah. Uh, but Mary Margaret might Mary be. Mary Margaret it's sounds a very like the name. Catholic sounding name. Um, there was the Stuart Smalley movie with Stuart oh. Saves His Family. No. Yep. <laughs> um, wouldn't be Sister Mary Margaret. Okay, Mary Catherine. That Molly sounds... Shannon played Mary Catherine. Um, Mary Catherine Gallagher. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good name for that character. But yeah, I like, remember the Tommy Night Boy at the Roxbury thing being a big flop. Yeah. Um, but also being kind of... You can do the little head twitch. What is love? Exactly. Baby, don't hurt me. Yep. <laughs> Whatever happened to Chris Kattan? I don't know, and I don't really care. He and Rob Schneider have always annoyed the heck out of me. They don't count... Um, Rob Schneider did a whole bunch of movies. In the 90s. Yeah, but he did those all under, I think they count under, because they're not looking at um, any of the Sandler stuff as being a SNL, SNL movie either. No kidding. Well, because I think it all falls under Happy Madison, right? Oh, that's his production company. Yeah. Um, yeah. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. I think. Right? Well, no, so that's, so apparently Happy Madison as a company, production company starts with Deuce Bigelow. Man oh with God, that was so came awful. Out in '99, yep, so bad. Um, but who did? Maybe it's just under Broadway Video, which was um, Lauren Michaels' production company. Mm. Let's see, Broadway Video Film. Up, 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 um. Yeah. Okay. So Broadway, they don't count them as SNL movies, um, but they were they were produced by Lauren Michaels Company, um, and those also include the Wayne's Worlds ones, um, Tommy Boy, Black Sheep. Um, those all came out at that time too. But yeah, nineteen ninety. Since we're talking comedy. Mm-hmm. Isn't that when uh, Home Alone came out? The first one with Macaulay Culkin? Is it? Oh, yeah. I've been watching Will and Grace reruns <laughs> kind of <laughs> religiously, and an adult Macaulay Culkin shows up. 1990, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching that one. That one a lot. <laughs> um, that was kind of like the heyday of, of Chris Columbus, right? Mm-hmm. The guy, the director... Um, produced by John Hughes. And he also, he also directed Only the Lonely, which is that John I Candy just movie. landed on that one. John yeah. Candy, we really liked him as yeah, kids. John Candy was great. My dad would take us to those movies a lot. Do you remember Uncle Buck? Yeah, That's course. a good one. Which also, I believe, features Macaulay Cook. Culkin. Is he in that? Yeah. Is he one of the kids he's that he's babysitting? Kids. Uncle yeah. Buck, he makes these giant pancakes and he has to use like a shovel. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the bratty teenage girl who just wants to be with her boyfriend whose name is like Rat <laughs> or something terrible. And, and <laughs> the uncle has to stand up for her, get her out of a bad situation. But came out in 1989. What? <laughs> came out in 1989. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but directed oh. by John Hughes. 
And was he doing right there? We on didn't the talk line about between. John Hill. He's John Hughes either. But he, uh, oh, he directed Curly Sue. His '90s films kind of took a dive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if yeah. you look at because his '80s stuff, obviously, if you're looking, which we didn't talk about him much at all, we didn't. But no, we didn't because we talked about Ferris Bueller's Day Off a little bit, but didn't we didn't talk Breakfast about Club? not oh, really. Man. Um, and we also didn't talk about Weird Science, didn't talk about Pretty in Pink. Weird Science was going to be my entry point for today's conversation before you brought the Rolling Stones 100 list because my sister and I were traveling over the weekend and it was playing in the hotel, Weird oh, yeah. Science. And it, I walked in right on the scene where they just made Lisa, but then they fell asleep because <laughs> they were partying all night and they wake up and they're like, Gary's like, Wyatt, it was all a dream. And why it's like, but we couldn't have dreamed the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like in your dream, did I get up and yak in the sink in the middle of the night? (laughs) And they can't figure it out. And then Gary or Wyatt, I keep getting them mixed up. Which one is? Which one is? Is not Uh, Anthony Michael. Michael Hall. Yeah. Yeah. The brown haired kid gets out of bed to go use the bathroom and he's wearing Lisa's like cut off top and her panties. Oh, and yeah. it's such a like hilarious scene. Mm-hmm. So again, I told you on the last installment, my sister and I didn't have a lot of parental monitoring when we were at home. We would just watch these VHSs over and over. And Weird Science is one of the ones mm-hmm. that we would just watch over and over. And watching it as an adult, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> there's drugs in that movie. There's like out of control partying. Mm-hmm. These guys that are minors sneak into bars. I'm like, no wonder. Where did we get all of those <laughs> ideas from? We got it from Weird Science. I I watched that stuff when I was a kid and I didn't There's I didn't do so any of it. many sex jokes. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. It's just like yeah. a really hormone charged <laughs> movie. <laughs> Well, but, and it's still so funny. It completely holds up. So, I mean, if you look at, um, well, an R.A.P., what's his name? Uh, Bill Paxton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but his, so his 80s directorial output was 16 Candles, Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and, uh, well, and she's having a baby, which was meh. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> And Uncle Buck. And then um, his 90s, uh, he only actually directed Curly Sue. That was his last wow. film. Weird. Yeah. It's kind of not a great one to go out on. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, it, there's, we'll probably have to come back and do like things that we missed or something because yeah, in the eighties we didn't talk we haven't about even mentioned. We didn't talk about like any Kevin Bacon movie. Tom Hanks. No Tom Hanks, yeah. I mean um, Yeah, A League of Their Own was another one of those girl movies. Well that, it was ninety two. Yeah. yeah. So that my sister and I watched one. she always played softball. That was like a bonding thing. This was Madonna's the Tom and... Hanks decade, right? Because yeah. you also had Forrest Gump. Yes. You had um Philadelphia. That movie's monumental. Yeah. We have to go back. Um, we could just talk Tom Hanks in the nineties. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, Tom, yeah, Tom Hanks in the nineties could be his his own thing. That was, I mean, his, he had um, we had the two we mentioned. Plus, what else did he do? It was like his he had. Well, and those were his back to back Oscar nominations, right? I think or Oscar wins were for Forrest Gump and then Philadelphia. That sounds right. Um, and we didn't really talk about we didn't talk about any. Of uh, um, oh, who was I thinking of? We haven't hit like any Sean Penn films. Ah, oh. no, uh, I'm surprised. Yeah, none of like Footloose didn't come up. Oh uh, no, we didn't really talk Tom Cruise at all. We're missing a lot of this decade. <laughs> clearly, I didn't yeah. get to go off on Interview with a Vampire or Blair Witch Project. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, okay, we'll have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so B point two. Yeah, there we go. Um, but I mean, I think we've we've kind of done it for okay. for tonight. Yeah, you look know. tired. I'll uh, let you I'm off the so hook. Done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to. There's there's a lot more to talk about. It would be interesting to you know. I think that because we we spent a little bit of time talking about the Coen Brothers mm-hmm. and what they did in the '90s, but 
it would be interesting to do one of these and like focus on a filmmaker or focus on a musician or focus on something because there's, there's 